before I get to what I really want to talk about in this video, I just want to take a moment and talk about some things that happened yesterday in training camp. Now, I'm not going to sit here and talk about, you know, how the players performed. Like, oh my god, I heard Kiki had a great day. Lonnie Johnson, he had a pick. So, Lonnie Johnson's going to be very good. I'm not going to sit here and say any of that. Because similar to OTAs, you know, if you guys have been following me, I'm pretty sure most of you guys have. The whole offseason, I've been saying, oh, you know, OTAs don't matter. Wait till the pads come on. Well, the first few days of training camp don't matter. Wait till the pads come on. So just wait till the pads come on. All this stuff you hear, oh, you know, this guy did good. or You know, this guy did bad, whatever. That don't matter. Wait till the pads come on. And the pads actually come on this Saturday. So everything you hear starting Saturday then start believing it a bit you know even then take everything you hear with a grain of salt why because you got a lot of people in the texans media that will always say oh you know everything's fine everything's fine oh you know everybody's doing good i'm looking at you john harris also looking at people like john mcclain you know, follow people like Pat D. Stat. I feel like Pat D. Stat is pretty unbiased. Like, if you guys are interested in like keeping up with training camp, follow Pat D. Stat on Twitter. He's definitely someone that's unbiased, and he usually tends to post like clips of the plays. And yeah, I feel like he's a pretty good guy to follow. But other than that, try not to listen to John Harris because. Although John Harris is smart as a football mind, he's clearly biased because he's being paid by the Texans. So anyways, let's talk about a few things that did happen in training camp, and that is J.J. Watt was practicing. He passed his physical. He was ready to go. So remember like a few days ago, oh my God, J.J. Watt's on the pup list. Ah, ah, cancel the season. The season's over. Watt's on the pup list. Told you guys Watt was going to be back eventually. He was going to be back before preseason. I was hoping they wouldn't activate him or like let him practice until like the regular season. But you know that's fine if he wants to practice. Let him do him. JJ Watt knows what he's doing. He's been here for nine years. He's you know future Hall of Famer. Let Watt do what he's doing. You know who else was back today or yesterday? Will Fuller, so Will Fuller, you know, like I said in my previous video, he wasn't on any type of list, so I assumed Will Fuller was going to be back, and Will Fuller was, in fact, back yesterday, and, you know, that's good, having Will Fuller out there, having Kiki QT out there, all that's missing is D-Hop, but, you know, D-Hop is D-Hop, and D-Hop does D-Hop things, and D-Hop is a beast, and I feel like I just said D-Hop too much there, but yeah, D-Hop is a beast, so... I don't really care if he's out there practicing. He'll be good. Him and Deshaun Watson got that connection already. And I feel like Deshaun really has a connection with everyone already. Like, his main receivers. It's just Vincent Smith. Kind of like, he got to work with him. And I think D-Hop not practicing here early on is a good thing. Because now Vincent Smith can take those reps. And Deshaun can get some chemistry with him. Another thing. Another guy that's back. Matt Khalil is practicing now unfortunately <laughs> and yes you heard me right i said unfortunately you guys know i don't like matt khalil i think matt khalil shouldn't have been signed matt khalil is terrible matt khalil is injury prone matt khalil is just gonna take up some reps from the younger offensive linemen in fact as much as i dislike julian davenport and you guys know i hate julian davenport I think I hate Matt Khalil more. <laughs> I honestly thought, or I was honestly hoping that Matt Khalil wouldn't be activated at all and like he'd just get cut after preseason because he didn't practice at all. But here we have Matt Khalil taking some reps away from the guys that could actually use him. So I was pretty upset about him being out there. Hopefully they cut him sooner than later because 
that's a big yikes. Now, another thing that I want to talk about, and this isn't like really Texans related, but it still kind of sort of has to do with the Texans, and that's the Washington Redskins. Yesterday, Thursday, the 25th, July 25th, it came out that the Redskins were looking at signing left tackle Donald Penn. Now, why does that matter to the Texans? Well, because the Redskins have a left tackle that goes by the name of Trent Williams, who is currently holding out, and Trent Williams wants out of Washington. He's a really good offensive tackle. He's a star player. You know, if he's holding out, he doesn't want to play for the Redskins, and then the Redskins go inside Donald Penn? What does that tell you? Well, to me, at least to me, it's telling me that the Redskins are indeed serious about trading him. Like, they're about to grant his request. And if there's a team that should definitely consider trading for Trent Williams, it's the Texans. So hopefully the Texans do something about that because, you know, as much faith as I want to put in these rookies, you know, Tajus Howard and Max Sharping, both of them are developmental projects, although one of them can, could come out and do good week one. It's highly unlikely that both of them will come out and do good week one. So we need another guy there, a proven guy, and I think Trent Williams is that guy. I would honestly trade a second round pick straight up for him. They'll probably ask for more, but I think we need him. Now, as far as Mike Daniels goes, I know I've kind of rambled on about other stuff, but it was kind of going to be a video like that anyways, talking about multiple things, addressing a bunch of topics that some people might ask about. But, yes, the Texans should absolutely get Mike Daniels. Now, I did hear yesterday, Thursday, that the Browns were going to bring him in for a visit. So, hopefully, the Browns don't sign him. I mean, it would really suck if, you know, I make this video. Because this video is being recorded Thursday night. So... Yeah, hopefully, by the time this video goes out, hopefully Mike Daniel is still available. And if he is, well, I think the Texans should absolutely get him because he's something we need, an interior defensive lineman. And if you guys don't know who Mike Daniels is, he's a guy, an interior defensive lineman that the Packers just cut a few days ago. I mean, if you want to know more about him, I mean, like he's six feet tall, a little bit short. 315 pounds he's 30 years old so he's a little bit older he's entering his eighth year in the league i mean since people love stats here are some stats 225 total tackles 29 sacks and i know some people are gonna say what 29 sacks well this is a guy that doesn't really get that many sacks he's more of a push the pocket type of guy disrupt the pocket from the inside type of guy because I know when people think of interior defensive linemen these days, people think of Chris Jones and Aaron Donald or J.J. Watt from like 2012, 2013, 2014. That's something unfair to compare like other interior defensive linemen to. I mean, you don't have to be a guy that gets like 100 sacks a year, but as long as you can push the pocket and make the quarterback uncomfortable, you're good as an interior defensive lineman providing pressure and that's something Mike Daniels can do he would also add depth to an already talented front seven and honestly he'd probably start in this front seven and the Texans for these past few years they've needed someone that can rush the quarterback from the inside someone that can disrupt the pocket from the interior They've needed a guy like that, and if we're being honest, the Texans, uh, they're kind of weak when it comes to pass rush. Like, all they got is J.J. Watt, Jadavion Clowney. You could say Whitney Merciless, but the way Romeo Cornell used them last year, 
Yeah, they're not using him properly, so I'm not even sure if I should consider Whitney Merciless a pass rusher. Now, if Clowney or Watt, you know, God forbid, if one of them gets hurt, obviously, I'm assuming Whitney Merciless would come down and be one of the edge rushers, but... Yeah, you know, I say this all the time. Romeo Cornell has to use his players right, you know. It's simple. Whitney Merciless and Javion Clowney at edge rusher J.J. Watt rushing from the inside. And I say it time and time again. It doesn't have to be an every down thing. It can only be on, like, obvious passing situations. You throw J.J. Watt inside if you don't want to risk J.J. breaking his back again. If that's a concern, because I've seen some people say, oh, you know, well, maybe they don't want JJ to get hurt again because, you know, he'd take on more double teams if he's on the inside. You know, that makes sense. But again, you could rotate your players. You can adjust your players, sub them in, sub them out. So Romeo Cornell definitely has the power to, you know, on third and long situations. Oh, you know, JJ Watt, slide inside, merciless, come on down and pass rush. You know, he can easily do that. Now, imagine if Romeo Cornell gets smart and starts using them three properly and then the Texans also sign Mike Daniels so say it's like third and 12 the Colts have the ball I don't know whoever we're playing the Colts so just you know use the Colts in this scenario because F the Colts and then you have Whitney Merciless and Jadavion Clowney coming from the edge you have Mike Daniels and JJ Watt from the inside I don't give a damn about no Quentin Nelson or you know whatever they ain't stopping that. They ain't stopping Whitney Merciless, J.J. Watt, Mike Daniels, Jadavion Clowney. And in case someone says, but Jadavion Clowney has signed a contract, Jadavion Clowney will report week one and he will be ready to go. So imagine that. Imagine those four guys coming at you on certain passing situations. And I know some people are going to say, what about DJ Reader? Well, as good as DJ Reader is, and as much as I love DJ Reader, DJ Reader is just a nose tackle, a guy that eats up blocks and stops the run. He's very, very good at his job. And, you know, maybe this off season, you know, before the season starts in week one, or, you know, most likely next year, DJ Reader is about to get paid over 10 mil because that is what he's worth. He's a very good nose tackle. He's good at what he does. But one of the things DJ Reader doesn't do is rush the passer, bring pressure from the inside, collapse the pocket on passing plays. That's something DJ Reader can't do. That's something Mike Daniels can do. So if you bring in Mike Daniels, he probably wouldn't be an every down player because it will probably be DJ Reader. And, you know, you could rotate Angelo Blackson who's really good at stopping the run as well. Brandon Dunn's also very good at stopping the run. So we got the run stoppers. We just need the guys that are able to disrupt the pocket. Go get Mike Daniels. Brian, oh wait, Brian Keane is gone. Go get Mike Daniels, whoever is in charge. I don't know, Greg Olson, Bill O'Brien. I don't know who's in charge, the janitor. Go get Mike Daniels because I think we need him. Now, how much would he cost? In my opinion, since he was due to make, I believe, like 10 point, I don't know, 10.5 mil around there this year by the Packers. Since he's 30 years old, I believe he is probably going to make somewhere between the 8 to 9 mil range. That's what I think he'll make. Someone will probably scoop him up for... You know, a one-year deal. But if I were the Texans, I'd probably scoop them up on a two-year deal. Because why not? I mean, we have the cap space. Even if we decide to pay Clowney next year, hopefully we do. We still have enough cap space to keep a guy like Mike Daniels around for two years. And then we could draft, I don't know, a rookie interior defensive lineman in the third round. And have him develop for a year behind Mike Daniels. Or maybe Charles Omena, who... You know, can be that guy that develops behind Mike Daniels. I don't know. Now, would the Texans do it? I honestly, on this one, I believe there is a small chance that they do do it. Because I refuse to believe 
that the Texans can legitimately look at their roster, especially in that interior defensive line, and say, you know, we're good. Unless, you know, Bill O'Brien and the Texans already talked to Romeo Cornell and they plan on using Whitney Merciless and Clowney and Watt accordingly. Unless that happened, which I don't think it did, but unless that happened, I can't see the Texans looking at the roster and saying, you know, we don't need a guy like Mike Daniels. They need a guy like Mike Daniels. Should the Texans do it? Yes, they need Mike Daniels. Would I do it? Absolutely. Now, before I end the video, in case you guys are wondering, yes, the gameplay you're watching is Madden 20. Do I like it? Absolutely. I think it's the best Madden since Madden 12. And that's pretty much all I got to say about that. If you guys made it to the end of this video, then appreciate you guys for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.